We've got the start of this one coming your way in moments from Progressive Field. The Twins and the Indians are on their way next. Afternoon baseball here on the show. Today we've got a good matchup ahead between the Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Indians. It's Indians baseball and it comes your way next. Shane Bieber, the California-born right-hander, is on the mound. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, Matt, this guy has a good repertoire of pitches, and he throws also a knuckle curveball. One guy comes to mind, Mike Mussina, former Oriole and Yankee pitcher, had a real good knuckle curve. It's not an easy pitch to learn, and what's more difficult, it's a difficult pitch for umpires to call strikes, and that's why we don't see a lot of pitchers using it today. So striding in, Max Kepler. And we are ready for some daytime baseball. Two and one now to the Twins' leadoff man. Two balls, one strike, the count. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. But this will wind up a foul ball. Two and two. Shaping up to be a pretty nice day for baseball. 69 degrees here at first pitch. Here now the 2 2. Thank you. This one is fouled away up to the concourse area. And right into the shift. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Another full count pitch home. Fouled away. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Allen is there to put it away for route number one. Batting second, the shortstop, Jorge. And now here's a look at the Minnesota Twins starting lineup. Dero, daytime road game for him. What you got? Focusing on this lineup, Matt. One thing jumps out at me. They are going to have to be good at situational hitting. The guy on the opposition right now on the bump has been throwing the ball great. He's not going to give him anything. I know in today's game everybody's trying to go deep but I'm telling you a good hit and run taking that extra bag today might be the difference between winning and losing. So let's take a peek at our umpiring crew in this one behind the plate is Gary Simmons. Dero, this Gary Simmons, he's the kind of umpire that pitchers really like to throw to. Yeah, I'm okay with it, though, Dan. You want to go east-west, I'll make the adjustment. It's the north-south that'll kill you. And he held up in time, but it's strike three called, and there are two down. You know, I'm not quite sure how that strikeout will be scored, looking or swinging. He tried to check his swing, but I'm pretty sure the home plate umpire was ringing him up regardless. To the plate now. Nelson Cruz. Just off the end of the bat, it's a foul ball, and he'll stick around. Bases are empty here with two men out. Just off the outside as he can't catch the corner. On the ground up the middle, reined in. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Down go the Twins in order. Twins zero. Indians coming up. You're tuned to Major League Baseball on the show. Jose Barrios gets the starting nod for the Twins. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, Matt, thanks coming on Jose Barrios, and this guy has all the tools to be a great one. Great velocity with life, 94 to 97 miles an hour, 
power slider, and it's a big sweeper. His changeup is getting better. If this guy brings all three pitches one of these days, he has the potential to throw a no-hitter. So here's Francisco Lindor now. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. And he got him. Wow, that's awfully impressive right there. The pitch before was really close. Called the ball. What does he do? He comes back with a better pitch and gets the punch out. So now to the plate, Oscar Mercado. Think he held up in time, but that becomes moot as it's a cold strike two. And he takes strike three called. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here to open the home first, two away. The main job of the number one and two hitters is to set the middle of the order up with an opportunity to do some damage. So when you strike both of them out, you're putting yourself in a pretty good position to make it through the teeth of the lineup without a whole lot of stress. Into the box, Carlos Santana. In for strike two. Back-to-back -back strikeouts in the first right here. Pitcher is setting a tone pound in the zone. Can't find the zone there as he lays off the breaking ball. Two out, nobody on. And he turns on this one and yanks it foul and back out of play. Sliced hard on the ground, but that finds its way through for a base hit. Santana will take the turn and head for second now. And he will pull into second with a two-out double. Batting four. The third baseman. Okay. Rob Virat. Stepping in now, Jose Ramirez. That one doesn't even sniff the zone, missing very high. Hey, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, that's right where you want to miss. Any lower, and he'll probably make you pay for it. The 2-2 pitch. And he fouls this one off. trying to back him up a bit there with the fastball. These are the kind of A-Bs, regardless of the outcome, you go back to the dugout as an offensive player, and your teammates are loving on you for making that pitcher work and battling it out. Chopped in front of home plate. And nothing will come of the two-out double as the inning is over. Danger averted following the two-out double. We're off to the second, scoreless on the show. the third baseman Josh Donaldson he'll get us started in the top of the second one and one here it comes hit back up the middle scooped up and the off-balance throw beats him at first, and that's a tough play. That is this. The left fielder, number 20, Eddie Rosario. Up next for Minnesota, Eddie Rosario. The 2-1 home. Will not catch the zone, ball three. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit more afraid of the guy on deck than the guy that's up right now. If I'm on the mound, I want this guy up right now. He's the guy that's got to beat me. The 3-1. Takes a strike for a full count now, 3-2. and two. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. No score here as we play inning number two. Again, he sends it out of play. Pulled toward right center field. 
Mercado. Well, range to his left and put it away. Two down. That is good. The next twin up, Mitch Garver. He'll work on keeping this top of the second alive. The 2 2. Ripped down the line, but a foul ball as it holds it 2 and 2. Takes this the other way to right, and that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. So some success with two out keeps the inning alive for Miguel Sano. You know, Dero, it's not always easy to hit in the day games. First five hitters, five up, five down. Six hole hitter, though. He must have gotten a good night's sleep last That's night. That's exactly where I was going, Dan. First five guys in the order looked like they were still asleep rolling out of bed. Those day games will creep up on you. Six hole guy was locked in there. A two ball, one strike count to the Twins' first baseman. Man, 35 pitches with only two outs in the second inning? Ideally, you'd like to have 30 or less after two innings, so he's got some catching up to do. And this one's low here, so the count swells to three and one. Garver is off a of first with two away. And that misses ball four, so it's first and second now with two out. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. Luis Arroyo. Coming to the plate now, Luis Arias. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. The set and the 2-2. Line drive to left. And that's in there. Base hit. Throw comes in quickly here, and that'll prevent the runner at third from testing things here. Man, I thought this at bat was over. Down 0-2. He's able to work himself back into a hitter's count. 2-2. And he's able to find the knock out there. In now, Byron Buxton. And it's fouled away. Bases are loaded here. Two down. And another foul ball. He's set. The 2-2. Two -two. And the 29th pitch of the inning is swung on and missed, and that'll finally end it. Twins leave the bases loaded. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And that'll bring in Fran Moreyes. Lifetime against Jose Barrios. He's a 333 hitter. The 1-1. One, one. Ball, that's out. Easy there, big fella. Two and two. Full count, three and two to the Indians DH. Well, that sets up a big pitch right here, Matt, because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around the leadoff walk. Fouled off. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at bat here. Here's a fly ball well hit. Kepler's on his horse. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. Batting fifth. The second baseman. Big ball. Turn again. In now for Cleveland. Cesar Hernandez. Bottom of the second here with no score. He pulls this one into right. That gets down. He's got himself a base hit. And this will find the wall out near the visitor's bullpen. And he is in at second base with a one-out double. 
That's the difference in today's games. Pitchers will throw any pitch in any count, but the batter was able to deliver on a 3-2 breaking ball. Digging in, Domingo Santana. Here's the 2 2. And he's getting his money's worth up there now. It's full 3 and 2. This guy uses that two seamer to set up his other pitches. Two seamer in, breaking ball away. Sent on the ground out to second. Throw gets him, two down. Standing in, Roberto Perez. Runner in scoring position with two guns. No score at this point, but a two-out hit could get a runner in from third. Fouled away. Here's the one-two. Extends nicely, and this ball is driven to right field and deep. Kepler is there, and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. One left for the Tribe. We'll move to the third with no score. Top of the third set to get underway, and standing in the outfielder, Max Kepler. The 1 1 home. Misses for the second ball. Here's a big swing and a miss on the fastball. 2 and 2. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an oar. The strikeout, and there's one gone. I like how he worked him backwards for that strike out there. He wasn't the showing the fastball early in the at bat, but then went back Jorge. to back once he had the hitter down in the count. Standing in now, Jorge Polanco. Grounded to short. Fielded cleanly. And that's the second out. And that'll bring up the big stick of Nelson Cruz. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. 3-2 pitch. And this misses for ball four. The second walk he surrendered here in the first three innings. Well, when you go with a the slider there in a full count, you're hoping that the hitter is thinking fastball and swings through it. Didn't work out that way, though. He lays off and gets the free pass. Stepping in, Josh Donaldson. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Third inning, no score to this point. And he misses low here, so the count goes to 3 and 1. Eddie Rosario would be next. Line towards center field. And as it turns out, the two out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. Twins wind up stranding one. Home half of the third coming up, no score. Bottom of the inning now, and set to go is the switch hitting outfielder, Greg Allen. Here now the 2-2. Is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. 
He's looked great on the bump the first few innings of this game, and I think his ability to change speeds effectively has been a big reason why. That was a good change of speed for the strike out there, and I've seen a lot of hitters look pretty off with their timing so far. At the plate, Francisco Lindor. 2 and 1 now to the tribe's leadoff man. Bottom of inning number three, nothing, nothing, our score. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. And he's getting his money's worth up there now. It's full three and two. Oh, and this is swung on and missed. Four strikeouts already, and that's out number two. Well, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. At the plate now, Oscar Mercado. And he's keeping it down here, and that's a cold strike, too. Hey, this is a huge at bat right here. This pitcher wants to end this inning and have three, four, five do up to start the next inning. Bases are empty here with two men out. And just a masterful job of pitching here as he strikes out the side in order. Three up, three down, three strikeouts. Not too shabby. Three innings in the books. Still no score on the show. Into the box, Eddie Rosario. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. This game is rolling right along as we move into the middle innings with no score. You'd think by now one of these two teams would be able to get some base runners on and get him in, but that hasn't been the case. Unable to find the zone with the slider. Well, if you love pitching and defense, this has been a game for you. Are you happy with that, Dan? Oh, you have to love it. You know, Matt, we have so many of these games that are 12 to 10 and 9 to 8. It's nice to see a low-scoring pitcher's duel for once. And he lays off a pitch off the plate and high, 3 and 2. Fastball swung on and missed for the first down. I'll tell you right now, this guy has a shutout going, and it's been all business. He's not messing around trying to pick at corners. He's being aggressive in the zone, and he's attacking each and every one of these hitters up to this point. Into the box, Mitch Garver. One and two to the Twins catcher. With the way this guy's throwing on the mound, you cannot be chasing. You have to set your sights a little bit lower and control the strike zone. Now a fastball taken outside here as it moves it to two and two now. High and deep to left. This one's got plenty of distance. And gone. An absolute bomb. A solo shot here to left as the Twins take a 1-0 lead. Hey, I know we're not sitting up here with a crystal ball, but that swing right there, although in the middle innings, could be the deciding factor. And we could be looking back at this one when it's all said and done. So now to the plate, Miguel Sano. Hit to first. Santana's got it. Throw in time at first for out number two. At the plate, Luis Arias. A base hit in his first trip. One run on three hits and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. Can't connect there. It's two and two. Outside in a full count, three and two. Byron Buxton would be next. Pulled high in the air out to right field. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. 
But the Twins fire the opening salvo as they're on the board courtesy of this solo home run. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It's now 1-0 Minnesota. Back alongside Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian as Carlos Santana settles in to lead off the inning. No walks yet. Here's the delivery. Hey. Helpful. And he fouls this one off. Another full count pitch home. And that misses for ball four. It's a leadoff walk that starts the bottom of the fourth. Well, he loses him there, but that's just the first walk he's now given back. up, along with the a couple of hits, man. so his command has been pretty solid so far. Ramirez. So here's the cleanup hitter, Jose Ramirez. No runs, two hits, no errors to this point for the Indians. And he lays oh, off there, ball four. So back-to-back -back walks have him in business here with nobody out. Well, they've struggled offensively in this one so far, but after that walk, they've got runners at first and second and look ready to make a little noise. Just need a big hit now. To the plate now is the designated hitter, Fran Moraes, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. None out, runners at first and second. And they come inside with the fastball, but it misses here, and it's back to two and two. He's already walked two in this inning already. This guy just can't seem to find the strike zone. Chopped now to short. Can they get two? He's got it. The second for one. On to first, and they get the double play. Oh, that's a rally killer right there. They were in great shape with two on and nobody out. But the double play is the last thing you want in that situation. Just a runner at third now, but there's two outs. Now at the plate, Cesar Hernandez, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. The set and the 1 1. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Heading after it is Kepler. He's there to track it down, and that'll end the inning. A couple of walks, but no damage. The three of us are back after this message and a word from our local stations. Riding in once again, Byron Buxton looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. The one two. Swung on, and he went fishing in the dirt. Up with it, Perez. And he makes the throw to first. Buxton is retired, and there's one away. Max Kepler, the next to grab a bat. No hits to this point. One out, nobody on. All even now, two and two. Full count to Max Kepler, three balls and two strikes. That's a great take right there. Great pitch recognition to let that one go. Opposite handed, that's coming across the plate. You might think you got a shot to stay inside that one. Now the three and two pitch. They haven't played perfectly as it's hit on the ground. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Now batting, Jorge Polanco. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Trying to send him packing for the second time. Grounded back up the middle. Reined in. Off balance throw, but he couldn't get enough on it, so it'll be scored as an infield single. Yeah, nobody on right there, Dan. Two outs. It's not every day you see a guy pick him up and put him down like him getting down to first base right there. Bought himself a base hit. Well, I tell you what, if you there's a couple of things you can do. It doesn't take a lot of talent to hustle, and doesn't take talent to be on time. And he hustled out of the box, 
turned what could have been a, gla a ground out to end the inning into Runner. an infield single. Runner goes for second. Strike taken to throw. Not in time. He's in there in second. I like the decision to steal right there, and it worked out. With two outs, there's not a lot to lose if you get caught, but if you get there successfully, all of a sudden you're just a single to the outfield from pushing a run across. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. Hit on the ground to third. And the stolen base winds up as a moot point as the inning is over. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one man left aboard. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Twins one and the Indians nothing. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Matt, I talked with manager Terry Francona during the break about his thoughts on the Indians hitters to this point. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. No, they have not scored yet, but they have been successful in running up the pitch count, something they feel will eventually pay dividends on the scoreboard as the starter gets tired and they are forced to go to the bullpen. For now, they're sticking to the plan. All right, thanks, Heidi. Striding in for the Indians, Domingo Santana. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Now the 1 and 1 pitch is laid off for ball 2. And a swing and a miss. Does that look like self defense there? It's 2 and 2. Not much you could do with that one. Tied him up in knots. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. He showed right there why having a good changeup is so valuable. Two and two, and he the flips one up there that the bottom really falls out at the last minute. It's so hard to pick up, and it's even harder to make good contact with. To the plate now, Roberto Perez. He's fallen behind now, three and one. They know the threat this guy possesses at the plate. I know it's three one in this situation right here, but I can't imagine anything comes over the heart of the plate. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. Oh, this ball is hammered out to deep center field. Whoa, give me a break. That landed in Heritage Park. It's a solo shot to dead center, and with it, the Indians have leveled the score at one apiece. When you're facing an elite starter, you know runs are going to be at a premium. I don't know if this shakes the starter's confidence, but you know what it does? It certainly boosts the confidence of the guys in your lineup. Stepping in now, Greg Allen. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. You could pretty much book it that a fastball's coming. A challenge fastball right here. He cannot allow the nine-hole hitter to get on base with the top of the order looming. And he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole in getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. Man, the pitcher's wondering how he didn't get that call. Busted him inside on a 3 1 count. The ump thought it was just a tad off the plate. Tough to get the benefit of the doubt from the umpire when you fall behind in a count like that, though. First here with one gone and a 1-1 one, one tie. Off-speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. Good job by the catcher to keep the ball from getting too far away and allowing that base runner to get into the scoring position. That keeps the double play in order, which they need, seeing as they've already given up one run in this inning. And the runner back safely. Runners off for second. On he pops it up. Rosario coming on, but he can't make the play as it finds the outfield grass. 
Throw comes in quickly from left, so even on the hit and run, they'll hold the things to first and second here. As the pitching coach heads out to the mound, I think this is probably just a case of giving your guy a chance to catch his breath, pump him up a little bit, let him know that he's got it under control. Standing in, Oscar Mercado. He's gone down on strikes twice already in this one. And Dan, when you know you have a chance to hand someone a hat trick for the game, is there any extra motivation to punch him out again? Hey, there's no doubt about that, Matt. When you have a good hitter like this and you've punched him out twice already, you just want to continue to go out there and make good pitches and see if you can't dominate him for a third time. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Some movement now in the Minnesota bullpen as a right-hander's up and throwing. There's a swing, and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. But he will haul this in on the run as he had to go back to the warning track to do it, and there are two away. And he'll make it up safely to third, so they're at the corners now with now two men out. Here's Carlos Santana now. It was a walk in his last trip. Into the corner and slicing foul. Hits are now even at four apiece. Just hung in there on that one. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. And this is going to get down for extra bases as that'll get one, if not both of them home. And the run is in to score from third. It's now a two to one ball game. When this thing left his bat, I started thinking it might have enough to get out of here. Didn't quite carry enough, but it does one hop the wall off the track, and he cruises into second with an RBI two bagger. You'll take that every day of the week. In now Jose Ramirez and it's fouled away and he struck him out his seventh of the ball game and that ends the inning the sights and sounds of a day at the ballpark oh my goodness Mark Dan and I are back with more after this Welcome back to Progressive Field in Cleveland as we send it down to Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. He said it feels like every at-bat has been an incredible battle, full count after full count. And he said eventually that absolutely wears the pitchers out on the other side, which should result in more offense for them as the game progresses. Okay, thank you, Heidi. New inning set to get underway. And standing in is the veteran third baseman, Josh Donaldson. The one two. down into left center for a base hit. No mistake what he was sitting on. Fastball middle of the plate. Kept his hands back. Stayed through the baseball and delivers a hard hit line drive. Into the box now. Eddie Rosario. And he takes ball two and it's two and one. Bounced foul. It's two and two. Hits are even right now at five aside. Here's a fly ball, well hit. Racing back the right fielder. He's not going to have a play on it, and this might bring home the runner from first. And they've really got something going here. Runners at second and third to start the inning. 
finally a little something for them to get excited about. Yeah, a rally can begin with a single swing of the bat, and this might be their chance right here. They've struggled to produce a lot of runs, but there he is at second base. A shot to the outfield scores him. Then who knows what kind of role they can get on. Got to take it one good at bat at a time. Here comes the Indians manager to make that slow trip to the mound. And a change is in the offing as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. So as he departs, his fate is still up in the air. He could stand to win it. He could get a no decision. He could even be on the hook for the loss if both runners come around to score. Dominic Leone comes on now in an awfully difficult situation as there are two on here with nobody out. At the plate, Mitch Garver. And that's into the corner of foul ball and right. The one two. They try to come in with the fastball, but it's too far in, and it's even at two and two. When you've got a guy that throws a good two-seam fastball, you have to be ready for him to try to run it inside and jam you. Good job to lay off that one, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again. Fouled off. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Here's a pop-up now. He will make the play, and an important one it was, as those runners will have to hold now with one away. Great scoring opportunity miss right there. You talk about frustration, popping it up with two runners in scoring position. He'd like to get that one back. So a crucial moment here in standing in, Miguel Sano, as he'll do his best to bring home the go-ahead run from third, 90 feet away. A ball and two strikes now. I never found myself on the mound in the big leagues, but it must be nice to be able to go to that good hard fastball when you're in a jam. Low scoring game thus far. Two to one here in the sixth. Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities, and when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. At the plate now, Luis Arias. Look out. Don't want to hit him there. It's full three and two. Some pitchers fall into the trap of giving in on three and two because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to make a quality pitch. Hit out towards second. And he has delivered one of the biggest at-bats of the afternoon as he cashes in with a base hit. And he'll get in there safely. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there. Safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. To the plate now, Byron Buxton. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. A run for the Twins, and it comes on this RBI double. On to the bottom of the sixth, and we're deadlocked now at two apiece. Matt Whistler enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Now pitching for the Twins, number 37, Matt Whistler. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and standing in is the DH, Fran Reyes. Ball three. Cesar Hernandez will be next. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes.
Looked like he was cheating a heater right there. A little bit too far out in front. Got to find a way to keep his hands back. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate. And he'll have another shot at it here. The payoff pitch one more time. He is swung on and missed. He got him. No matter, seven. Digging in the switch hitter, Cesar Hernandez. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Now the three and two pitch. And here's a slider that misses below the knees. It's ball four. I know one thing. He earned that free pass right there. He was tempted with some really good pitches, but he stayed disciplined and drew the walk. Stepping in, Domingo Santana. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. Runner at first here with one away in a 2-2 ball game. To two balls and two strikes now. And that misses, so it's a full count, three and two. Not a bad time right here to put that runner in motion. Three, two count. You send the runner, and if it's a bad pitch, it's ball four. Runner, runner, Runner's runner. going. In there, now the throw. Not in time as he steals second. They ran the risk of a strike him out, throw him out play there, but that was a good job of getting in there successfully. On three and two, there's a decent chance the hitter puts the ball in place, so it can be a good time to be aggressive just like that. Two out here and a runner at second. Hit on the ground to third. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. So they pick up no runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Seventh inning coming up. And we are tied 2-2. Oliver Perez is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 39, Oliver Perez. Seventh inning ready to roll. And next to bat will be the outfielder, Max Kepler. The 2 1. Ground ball right side. Scooped up. And the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven. The batter, number 11. One gone now in the Minnesota seventh, and that'll bring in Jorge Polanco to hit next. Crowd gets up for the 3 2. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. Whoa, that ball was close. Whizzed right by his now head. That. I think That's he probably heard it go by, no, guys. Sir. That's pretty unsettling for a pitcher. Trust me, I know. Stepping in now, Nelson Cruz. 2-1 pitch is a fastball swung on and missed 2-2. Two and two. It's not easy to get your barrel to a pitch that high. That can be an effective location as long as he keeps it above the letters. Here now the 2-2. Two, two. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. Possible go-ahead runs on first, one away. Full count, three balls and two strikes to the Twins' D.H., Every base runner in a close game like this really matters, so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. A look by Perez, now the pitch. And a fastball blew it right by him, and they're two down. In a double play situation, 
you kind of expect most pitches to be down in the zone hoping for a ground ball so that was an interesting pitch selection to go up in the zone I think he caught him off guard a little bit into the box Josh Donaldson runner goes pitch inside the throw he is not in time pretty close but he got in there safely hey it's almost impossible to throw a base runner out that gets a lead that big and plus this catcher's not known for having a cannon of an arm ready with the 2-1 count a 3-1 this is a spot you like to be in as a good hitter. Runners in scoring position and count leverage in your favor. The three and one pitch. Oh, and this ball is absolutely blasted. High and deep. Gone! A two-run shot that gives them the lead. When that pitch was grooved right down Main Street, he couldn't believe it. He started salivating when he saw it, but stayed back enough to put a great swing on it. Standing in now, Eddie Rosario. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Looks like that bomb earlier in the inning kind of put this pitcher on the defensive. Not being very aggressive right now. A swing and a ground ball to third. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at two and two. Again, another foul ball. Well off the inside that time as the sinker misses for a ball. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Oh, that hit him. Let's hope he's okay. Fortunately, he's able to stick with it and get the out at first, and that'll put an end to the Ladies inning. But two run score for the Twins, both coming on this two run home run. Get up and stretch. Home half of the seventh coming up. It's now 4 2 in favor of the Twins. Last half of the seventh here, and next it'll be the outfielder, Greg Allen. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan of bloop and a blast? They could certainly use that right now. Strike two called, and it's full three and two. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. Now the three and two pitch. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Down the first baseline. He's got it, and he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. One out now for the Indians in their seventh, and with it comes Francisco Lindor to the plate. Maddie, he checks every box. Charisma, smile, hits from both sides of the plate with pop, defense, you name it. GM's dream right here. And that is through into center field for a one-out single. 
Hey guys, this, he's not known for being a singles hitter right here, but that's his second knock in the game. And I'm sure he'll take him, but the guys on the other side of the scorecard might be thinking we really avoided a worse fate. Into the box now, Oscar Mercado. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. Boy, that's really disappointing for a guy that has wheels, right? All he wants to do is get on base and take advantage of the strength of his game, which is his speed. But with the strikeout right there, you can't get on first base if you strike out. At the plate, Carlos Santana. Smoke toward third. Donaldson's there. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Indians leave one. Still down by a count of four to two. Phil Maton has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 88. Now with the plate, Mitch Garver. He homered earlier and is two for three to this point. Fastball runs in tight here, and it's two and one. Swing, and there it goes. He got all of this one. Onto the home run porch, and gone. So a solo shot down the line in left, his second of the game. And just like that, it's now a 5-2 ball game. Plate now, Miguel Sano. Looked like he got fooled on the speed there, two and two. With this one almost in the books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, D-Roll, but boy, when the weather starts to warm up and the ball starts jumping out like this, it's clear that the pitchers need to start making better pitches. Yeah, just great approach. No one really chased today. Really stayed staunch on, on their ability to get that pitcher to come into the heart of the plate. And they did damage with it. So now to the plate, Luis Arias. On a line, that's a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Hey, this guy's obviously seeing the ball right now. That's another hard hit single. Three for four right there. He's looking super solid at the plate. So that'll bring in Byron Buxton. Three at-bats for him in this one, all ending with him going down on strikes. The 1-1 home makes him swing and miss on a ball out of the zone for strike two. First and second here with nobody out. And he'll strike out here yet again. As it's been a ball game to forget thus far. Four strikeouts. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. Into the box, Max Kepler. 
Slider, more of a slurve right there, but it's one and two. Runners are at first and second with one away. Fouled away. Hit down the third baseline. But this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. Working for the punch out and the offering. Looked like the sinker there dipped a little below the knees. Yeah, and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. Here now the 2 2. Swung on and fouled as it looked to make it all the way up into the concourse area. Another 2 2 offering. Hey, this has been an epic at bat right here. I don't blame the pitcher for a little nibbling right there. Maybe get a swing and a miss. He didn't bite on that one, so now we go full count. Making him work out there. The ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Now a swing and he pops him up. And I believe, yes, the umpire signaling for the infield fly rule. Digging in and looking for more. Jorge Polanco. He singled his last time up. Yeah, and they take another single right here. That third base coach is dying to wave his arms. I wouldn't be surprised if anything hit hard through the infield. He's going to wave them. He struck him out. And it could have been worse. The inning over with only a run coming across to score. But the Twins add on thanks to this solo shot. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's now 5-2 Minnesota. Trevor May is on the pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 65, Trevor May. Leading off the inning, Jose Ramirez, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. I mean, what a diamond in the rough Jose Ramirez has been for Terry Francona and the Cleveland Indians. This guy burst on the scene in 2016, just absolutely set that lineup on fire. They were looking for a guy to bail out Michael Brantley and the production they would miss from him in the lineup, and Jose Ramirez filled that admirably. Another full count pitch home. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eighth. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving one up where he can really hurt you. Next will be the designated hitter, Fran Moreyes. He went down on strikes last time up. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. Fastball, and mm, looks like they're pinching him a bit here. It's three and one. We're in the eighth inning now of a five to two ball game. Ah, he's behind on the swing there, and the count moves to three and two. Hey, boys, you talking about getting your A swing off right here? That's what it looks like. A guy with massive power letting it eat. And that's down into left center for a base hit. And they've really got something going here. Runners at second and third to start the inning. This guy just feasts on mistakes up in the zone, and, and that's exactly what he gets right here. A belt-high pitch, he drives into the alley. Great chance now with two runners in scoring position. At the plate, Cesar Hernandez. And Dan, what's the plan of attack here for the guy on the mound? Well, I think they have to go right after him. He's pretty unlikely to take you deep, but if you allow him to get on base, the chances of him scoring and tying this game become a lot greater. Runners at second and third here. Nobody out. A bouncer to the left side. And that's the first down. So striding forward now, Domingo Santana. He was sent packing on strikes in his last trip. 
Yeah, Maddie, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Ready with the 1-1 pitch. And he fouls this one off. Well, the Indians have been searching for that big hit pretty much all game. It remains to be seen if they can get it, but now sure would be a great time. The one-two. Two ball, two strike. Second and third here, one man out. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. Now the three and two pitch. is swung on and missed so they come right after him and it remains second and third but with two away now boy there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball a high piece of cheese swung at and missed that pitch looks so inviting to hit but it's awfully tough to put in play Sergio Romo comes on now looking for the final out of the inning to strand the two runners in scoring position Sergio Romo Blake now Roberto Perez struck him out so they work out of the jam as he strands two men in scoring position Indians strand a couple they trail 5 2 Adam Simber enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Here's Nelson Cruz now. 0 for 3 to this point. Yeah, not his game so far. He's such a good hitter. We all kind of expect him to pick up two or three hits most of the time. That's not really how baseball works, though. One and two. Simber was known as a short relief specialist, a guy who came in, got one or two big outs, but with the new pace of play rules, they're forcing a change for this right-hander. Pitch on the way. Nope, at the ball. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there for the first out here in the ninth. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. The Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. Standing in now, Josh Donaldson hit high and deep out to left field. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Now back. Ready now, Eddie Rosario. He comes into this appearance in the midst of a one for four day. Two out, nobody on. This ball runs away for ball two, two and one. A little early, and now it's even at two and two. Here. 
it comes. All right. We got a full count. Count still full, three and two. Payoff pitch one more time. Bases are empty here with two men out. And that one's taken outside for a ball. He walked him. So no one, two, three inning here. They've got themselves a two out base runner. Up next for Minnesota. The catcher. Mitch Garver is going to have another crack at it here, and it's been a great offensive performance for him so far. This was back in the eighth, his second home run of the game, as he dearly loved to make it three right here. And this is low, ball two, two and one. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got the count in his favor, three and one. And he misses again, ball four, and that's back-to-back -back guys now that have reached base via the base on ball. The first base is number 22. Miguel. Into the box now, Miguel Sano. It was a single for him in his last at-bat. Two men are on with two men out. Now a swing and a hard hit grounder. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. And he struck him out. So a good pitch there. And now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at bat if they want to get back in this thing. So they let him off the hook here by scoring no runs despite the two walks. Nothing further in the Minnesota ninth. Last chance coming up for the Indians. They're down here five to two. You're Taylor Rogers complete. comes on looking for now a save here in the point. bottom of the ninth inning. Number 55, Taylor Rogers. So coming to the plate, Greg Allen. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Hey, not impossible, but highly improbable. Even when you're at home to score three runs off a closer like this guy, they've got the work cut out for him. The count now at two and one. Grounded up the first baseline, but this will wind up a foul ball. Two and two. Now here it comes. You know, you don't always have to straight challenge a guy on a 3-2 count. With the three-run lead, no one on base, this is the perfect situation to do it. No reason to nibble and possibly set up a big inning. Sent on the ground out to second. Fielded cleanly, and he will whip this one over to first in time for the out. Up to Cleveland. And that'll bring in the switch hitting Francisco Lindor. Lindor. Bases are empty, one man out. And he misses again, ball three. Hey, this is a real pesky hitter right here. As a pitcher, you really like to keep this guy off the bases. This is a guy that kind of sets the tables for big innings. Holds off on the slider, and that's a good idea as it's ball four. You know, it takes a lot of discipline to watch a pitch like that go by, but on a 3-1 count, he had the luxury of being a little bit more selective up there. Good take, and a walk is the result. At the plate, Oscar Mercado. A hat trick already to his credit in this one, so he's looking to avoid the dreaded golden sombrero here. Pitch. Swung on and missed, and that's strike two. Great pitch in that situation. If he makes contact on that one, more than likely he's hitting into a double play. And he lays off it to even the count two and two. 
Runners on first with one down. To third. Right to Donaldson. One there. On to first. And he rolls a double play ball to end it here as this ball game is over. Yeah, and they end this thing with style, turning that double play to preserve the win. That's what we call finishing strong. Five to two, the final today. The Minnesota Twins jumped ahead in the seventh inning and never gave the lead back. Matt Wisler gets the W on the mound. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. The final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious twins. Five runs, 12 hits, no errors. They left 11 men on base. For Cleveland, two runs, seven hits, no errors. They left 10 men on base. Time of the ball game. Two